Hello, and thanks for joining me. I'm Bill Wagner. I work in the .NET content team, primarily creating documentation for C Sharp. Especially want to thank you for helping us raise money for direct relief for COVID-19. And I'm here to talk to you about change, what it is that we do. So let's get started. So as software developers, we create change. Every single industry we touch, we change. So in this, I'm going to talk about how we can manage that change, changing our tools, changing our outlook, change the platforms that we work on, manage changing our career and our life a little bit as well. So let's take our first look into here and let's begin with going, you know, you've chosen a career in software. That's awesome. And now this is just such a dynamic field. You're never going to get bored. And that's both the really good news and the really bad news. It's great because you'll never get bored and you can constantly get re-energized by trying new things and exploring new different areas. The bad news is if you really want to have a successful career, you're going to have to navigate change a few different times. If you think about the course of a full career, I started after college when I was 22 years old, and I still hope I have several years left. But if you think of a 40-year career, a little more than 42, 43, 44 years, depending on how long you want to work, and if you realize that this industry completely reinvents itself somewhere between five and 10 years, so let's say seven, that means you're going to totally reinvent yourself six times in your entire career. In order to do that, you really have to be able to embrace change especially if you're a young developer or a new developer starting your career, the skills you have right now, the specific skills on a platform or a design technique or something of that nature, they'll last for a while and they're very important, but they won't help you manage an entire career. So you need to do a couple different things. You're going to need to be constantly looking at incremental changes and ways you can get a little better every day and a little bit of improvement every day. And really watch and be on the lookout for that next sea change of what's going to happen next. So you're going to be driving those incremental changes. And if you see them, and if you get lucky enough, you get to drive some of the sea changes as well. And when you do that, then you can really have the kind of success that lasts for decades in this industry and can be really, truly rewarding. So I want to look at change from a couple different things, a couple different aspects of it. Remember we talked about, the, I said that software changes every industry it's been in touch with. You know, think no matter how long your life has been so far, think of how things started and things that you remember when you were younger and how much has software changed everything from the cars we drive. Everything now is drive by wire. There's nothing physically controlling your steering wheel, bracket and pinion steering, or controlling the transmission, shifting gears is all done by wire. Even in a manual transmission, your clutch is by wire, brakes are by wire, throttle, everything controlled electronically. Think of entertainment, whether it's how animation has changed, how we do CGI, how we produce movies and splice different scene changes together. How much has software changed that? How we process the music that goes along with it giving it surround sound, so many different speakers, how we consume it at home, Netflix, other streaming services, even a conference like this, software has changed that. Software enabled us to go to the moon. You know, a little more than 50 years ago, we were able to use software to take something shaped like a gun drop, gum drop, bounce it off the atmosphere, and land it in the ocean close enough to ships to rescue it without hitting any of those. That wouldn't be possible beforehand. So software changes every industry it comes in contact with. And it's doing it again, everything in terms of big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And we're responsible for that change. As software developers, one really important thing for us is that we are responsible for making sure that change is as positive as we can make it. We have to be stewards of that change. We also look a lot at internal changes. In the same way I've talked about how software has changed every other industry, 
Think about how software itself has changed. When I even first wrote this slide deck and first gave this talk, Angular was at its 1.0 release. It's been reinvented several times. jQuery was the way we did anything with JavaScript. That's changed. We've done all kinds of things internally. So we want to look at how we're going to change those as well. Some of the changes are small, and we don't even notice anything important about it until maybe decades later to see what actually happened and to understand how, it, how a change morphed and continued to grow. What we want to do is we really want to look for those things that we can see and figure out how we bend the curve, to use a, a current phrase, but to bend it in our favor. Sometimes we want to make it grow. Sometimes we want to make it shrink. So what we mean by that is everything we do affects the world around us. So by introducing change, sometimes we want to make more of something to happen. We want to be more productive. We want one line of software, one line of code to do more. There was a study that was done all the way back when Fred Brooks wrote um, Mythical Man Month. It's been carried on since then that a developer writes about 60 lines of code a day of bug-free code, considering testing and doing all that. That number stayed constant throughout all these decades. But what's different is using modern languages, modern frameworks, and modern tools, that one line of code does a lot more than it did 50 years ago. So by using better tools, better platforms, better techniques, we now are more productive. Other things we want to do, we want to bend curves downward by using software to communicate faster. The lag between seeing something happening and being able to communicate it, that's moved downward. So we can do things more quickly. And there's a personal story from this. When I was a very young child, uh, my grandmother was uh, diagnosed with tuberculosis. So she was quarantined separately from the family for some time, and we had no contact with her at all. Just this past Sunday, I was on video chat with my mom, our kids, and we had you know, not the same experience we wanted, but we did have an experience that worked together because of software. And again, that lag was different, communication was better, and things moved forward faster. Once again, we get to affect that change. Software developers made that happen. So first let's look, when you're managing what you're doing, now how do we handle this change and how do we make it a positive for us as well? Huge external changes start to create new markets. The move from mainframes to workstations to PCs put software in front of a lot more people and made software something that everyone could use. Move from text to ANSI graphics to GUIs, different things of that nature made it much more accessible to more people. It was easier to go international when more things were based on images and when we could share pictures with each other. It was a richer communication. As we add video and we add sound, it gets richer again. That makes things more accessible. Move from desktop to client server to the web. We brought things and made it more personal, and then we made that personal more accessible to everyone. We're doing the same thing again. PCs, laptops, phones. We're going into the cloud where we can deal with data at such a scale that we've never even imagined before. And at each step, we start to recognize some things and we start to ride the next wave and do something that's really big. Each one of those waves created huge companies, huge wealth, and did it in a way that made life better for large numbers of people. So as you're managing your career and as you're looking through things, a big thing that you're going to want to do is Look for waves that are exciting to you. Look for things that you want to, to be part of that can take off. At the same time that all of those changes happen, we make internal changes. Everything that happens inside our industry that we've done to become more productive and be able to do more. Bjorn just talked about C++. That was one of the first big changes in my career. I started writing Pascal and C and some assembler, and then switch to C++, which was a huge difference in terms of how we wrote code and how we could isolate change and how we could 
create more expressive designs and use them to do more impressive things. Move from object-oriented to component-oriented to functional to microservices, Kubernetes, all these things we do for a reason to solve particular problems. Different tools that we've used, single server version control. You know, Some small companies even started with daily zip files for version control. Distributed version control in the form of Git or Mercurial. Now, web-based distributed version control on GitHub or um, Bitbucket that's worldwide and accessible to anyone. Agile Manifesto, taking things from lean manufacturing and applying that to software. Doing things like TDD, BDD, business driven development, the craft movement. All of these things are changing the way we think about the problems that we want to solve, how we want to solve those problems, and the way we want to express those solutions. So those internal changes continue to make us better. So as we look at both of those, those internal changes, those external changes, those huge market shifting things, those incremental changes, as we observe what's happening, how do we use those observations to help ourselves be better and to pick the right ones and to make the right bets. These are some of the things that I've learned that I've found useful that hopefully help you. First, learn broadly. Pay attention to, do, to a lot of different opinions, different platforms, different ideas. I do make it a habit, even though I've always worked from home for, for most of my career, I shut off the computer and I read things. Read things from different disciplines. Expose yourself to different ideas and learn from them. You can apply those to what you do. If you think of yourself just as a JavaScript developer or just as a web developer, look at some things from other areas. What do embedded developers do? What happens for real-time development? What about game development? Expose yourself a little bit to these different techniques and the different design decisions that they have to make for the kinds of problems they're solving and learn from those. You know, it's definitely true, as, as Bjorn showed, that languages grew from previous languages. That's true because we learn from each other. And as you see what other languages are doing and what other platforms are doing, you go, that's a really good idea. We should adopt that. And there's no shame in that because we know other people are doing the same thing. They're learning from what we do, and they're going to adopt that. Be a little skeptical, though, when you see all these ideas. Look at how you can apply them, and also, maybe it's a dud. When I first wrote this deck, I said that for every iPhone, there's a Newton. Same thing is true with every single platform. There's going to be some winners and some that go, that idea really just didn't work, even though it sounded really good at the time. So think to yourself, do you want to use it? One of the best bits of advice I got when I was first working on writing some of the first books that I wrote uh, was from Scott Myers. And what he said was, if you're looking for a publisher, look at your own bookshelf. What do you read? And if the publisher that's talking to you doesn't have any of their, you don't have any of their books on your bookshelf, maybe that's not who you want to work for. If you don't read what they create, why would you expect others to? And in the same way, as you're looking and exploring at these different ideas, if you don't enjoy it, you should trust that maybe your instincts are right. Maybe the hype isn't there. But if you see something that's new and you go, this really looks like a winner based on your experience, based on what you've learned, dive in and really make it happen. Don't fall behind on the incremental changes. Anytime you hear yourself say, that's the way we've always done it. That's a good time to really examine if that's the way you should still do things. Now, some of the best teams that I've worked for and some of the best companies I've worked for have always decided we really need to bring in some new people every year, every couple of years, every six months. Mix things up a little bit on the team because that way you get people asking questions because they're new. They don't just accept the way you've always done something. And you say, Okay, I see why you're doing that. Would this be better? And you have to expose yourself to that, and you have to be thinking about that. What can I do better today? 
one thing that I apply in part because I write docs for C sharp is when new features become available in the preview builds, I make it a habit for me to try to use those in everything I do for the first two or three months. Now, I won't necessarily publish all those because sometimes I look at that when I've used a new feature and go, that really didn't fit here. That doesn't make sense here. That, that didn't make my life easier. And I'll go back to the old way. But it forces me to learn something new and to, to apply it. And then I find places where it makes sense to use it. And that helps me keep current and helps me explain things better to go. When I see a new feature, like when I see pattern matching and I go, this is a great problem for, for what we've just added to the language. And it makes code a lot more concise. But if I didn't make a habit of trying, then I don't necessarily get to that. So stay current in what you're doing right now and always try to read different things from people. Listen to podcasts if that's the way you prefer learning. Watch some of the video training that's available now if that's the way you prefer learning. And try and experiment and build your own things when you have the time. And in your daily job, make some time to learn. It's going to be important to stay current. And then one of the biggest things to be important about, about how you approach these kinds of things in terms of making changes and trying to work changes for what you're doing. Know how to measure. Be creative, but experiment. So change one thing at a time, maybe two things if they're closely related. Pilot it. See if it's better or if it's not better. And because you've only changed one or at most two things, you have a pretty good idea if it's better, that's what made it better. If it's not better, then that maybe that wasn't what made it better that may have had a negative impact. Back off and try something else that's new. And evaluate it each time. One problem I often see companies make, and it's just human nature, is when you try something new, you want it to succeed so bad that the only thing that feels like success is we tried this and it was wonderful. Success is also we tried this and here's what we learned and now we're moved away from it. So don't be afraid to go, I'm going to try this. No, that's not what I want to do. That's the way you learn and that's the way you learn how to better evaluate the next thing you try and take those lessons. And then finally, when you're ready and when you see something, make a big bet and say, this is what I want to dive into, and this is what I'm going to do. And those are the ones that you really want to believe in and make something happen with. And when you do that, remember that everything that you do and every application you write is going to impact everyone who uses it. Do everything you can to make that impact positive. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a world-saving piece of software. Games are great, and they make people happier. Software that tracks people's fitness makes people healthier, even if it's small. But everything you do, try to make it something that you yourself are proud of, and you're making a positive change in the people that use your software. Even as the software industry is making a positive impact on your life and your future. And with that, you know, my own history, I started C, Pascal, moved into C++, to make a few games and had a lot of fun doing that. And then as I was getting kind of tired of C++ after a while, spent a couple years in Java, and then saw C Sharp show up. And I've been doing that since its first alpha. And I've continued to grow with that as the language continues to grow and as we continue to do things with it. And if you look, C Sharp today and .NET today is very different than it was when it was first introduced. It's meant to solve different problems. We're looking at different big bets. It has a lot of different features that it's incorporated from both original work, and a lot of ideas that we saw in the industry. And it continues to move forward. And that's the kind of big bet we want to keep making. That's the kind of big bets you should be looking for in what you want to do. And with that, we're getting close to the end of where we're trying to be. So once again, I'm Bill Wagner. 
You can find me on Twitter at Bill Wagner. I'm happy to answer any questions there or checking in on the Twitch and see if there's questions there to answer. And I'm responsible for the C Sharp docs, primarily under the .NET doc site. And my team, everything that we produce is at docs.microsoft.com slash .NET. And we're going to make it easier for you to adopt .NET and hopefully place a big bet there.